Hello and welcome back to Animated Literacy. This is lesson number 46 from the Story, Song, and Action book. In our last lesson, we learned about Edgar Elf and how he has to exercise so he can get away if Ellie Elephant escapes from her enclosure. So for Edgar Elf sound, we show our muscles like this, pretend to lift our heavy weights, flex our muscles and go, eh. And if Edgar Elf eats a banana, we learned it's called a what? Be ne ne, say that, be ne ne. But if he eats a lemon, what is it? Le men. And if we put that into apples and bananas, what's it gonna sound like? Edgar likes to et, 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 lemons and bananas. Try it again, do it with me. Edgar likes to et, 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 lemons and bananas. After learning all about Edgar Elf, we drew some pictures that use his sound and we drew some pictures that rhymed. And so the ones that we drew looked like this. And I talked about that after we finish our drawing, you can go back and draw those again and then add your color words. And so here's a chart that I made. And so now in this one, I have a green elf. And so my word green is pointing to the elf. Now you might remember we learned about two different kinds of words by reading these two books. We learned that the words that I put inside a circle are called a noun. And this book helps us remember that. So this is a book that I used to read to the kids in my classroom over and over and over again. And it goes like this. Hill is a noun. Mill is a noun. Even Uncle Phil is a noun. Gown is a noun. Crown is a noun. In fact, our whole hometown is a noun. So nouns are those objects that we can draw, we can trace around. And so we put them inside a circle because that's a shape that we can trace around. Then we learned that the words that have arrows, like our colors, point to the nouns. So you can see in our picture, every time I put in a color word, it points to the noun that's inside the circle. And so Harry Scary Ordinary tells us about adjectives. And we read a bit of that. You can say this after me. Adjectives are words like Harry. Adjectives are words like Harry. Scary, cool, scary, cool, and ordinary. They describe like tan and tall. They describe like tan and tall. And tan is a color, so that's an adjective. Funny, frisky, smooth, and small. So reading those books over and over will help you to remember what those kinds of words are called. And so the more that you, write, that you draw and the more that you label, the faster you're going to get at reading and writing words. And on our chart we did yesterday, we didn't have time to draw a bell, but I went ahead and drew a bell here and I put a shell so those are two words that rhyme. We we'll find a bell and ring it by my shell, or so we can do something with that to, to rhyme and play with it. And then after I did my picture, I wrote a sentence about it. So I wrote the sentence, my elf is green. And I showed you one of my students' pictures the other day, and she drew her elf, and the sentence that she wrote says, I see an elf. And so after you have finished drawing your picture and you're writing your color words, then you can always write a sentence about them. And we also did a verse for our song so we could practice our words. So we can practice doing these over and over again. So do you remember the elephant song we did? Let's practice it once with our paper. And if you have your paper, you can take your finger, put it on the words and do it with me. Ready? One green elf went out to play upon a flat red shelf one day. She had such enormous fun that she called for another green elf to 
Um, so in my frame, I wrote about what color elf? A green elf. So here's my adjective green pointing to my noun, the elf. And then I added some other words on here. So this elf has a hat, which we can also call a cap, and I made it blue. So blue is pointing. And my elf has a leg, and that has all of the sounds, uh, sounds we've learned in it. And he, what color leg does it have? A brown leg. And let's see, what else did I put on here? An arm. It has a brown arm. And so you can learn a lot from these. And you, what you need to do is make sure that the picture you put up here matches the words that you have down here. Now our word wall is getting longer and longer and longer. So we have three full charts of words now. So these are things that you can draw over and over again. You can write the words over and over again. You can gesture the sounds in those words over and over again. So let's practice one that way so you see how we want to do that. Let's do one of our new ones. See if you can guess the word that I'm doing. Jet. Again, jet. What was my word? Jet. So you can play a guessing game. And what are the letters in my word jet? J-E-T. Now let's have you gesture one. Can you show me the sounds in elf? Eh, oh, can you tell me the letters that we used to spell elf? E, L, F. So that's something you can practice over and over and over again with all of those words from the charts that we're making. One of the things that we're going to be talking about in our lesson today is a weed that sometimes grows in my yard. And down by the mailbox, I often find weeds that look like this growing. And they can look really pretty when they have lots of, of rain and, they're, and they feel nice and tender so they don't prick you. But then when they start to get dry, you don't want to brush up against them because they have these thorns that stick out. And the flower can look real pretty on them. Now this is also a thistle, but there's a big difference between the thistle down, thistles down here and the thistles up here. These are thistles that you can eat. These are thistles that you would not want to eat. So now the thistles that are down here, when the little flower dies up on top, then you know the thistle is ripe and you can cook it. And this part of the flower is called an artichoke. Can you say artichoke? And it has these little leaves on it like this. And after it's been cooked, you can peel the leaves back and inside each leaf is a bit of like meat that you can take your teeth and you can scrape out and you can eat the artichoke. We can use artichoke in our songs, if we take and we use Edgar Elf sound in artichoke, how many th syllables are in that word? R to choke. R to choke. So how many times are we going to use his sound? So if his sound is eh, listen to what it would say. Eh te check. Can you say that? Eh te check. But if Uncle Upton eats the artichoke, it's what? A uh, to chuck, say that, a uh, to chuck. And if actress Annie eats it, it's what? A uh, to chuck, a uh, to chuck. And if Ollie Ostrich eats it, what is it? A uh, to chuck, a uh, to chuck. But if Arnie Aardvark eats it, what do we call it? Our tar chark, our tar chark. And we're back to what? Eh, te, check. So that's one of the things that we're going to be talking about today are thistles. Another subject that you can talk with your parents and, and teacher about so that you can think about what you already know is weather. And here are some Skyberry books about the weather. This one is called The Cloud Book by Tommy DePola. And so you can read about clouds in that book. And that's one of our subjects 
today. And this is another one that says, what's the weather like today? And that's something that people seem to talk about all the time. Oh, gee, look at the nice weather we have today. Oh, it's snowing today. It's raining today. Why do we need to know those things? You have to know what the weather's like so you know what to put on in the morning when you get up out of bed. Here are a couple other Skybrary books that you can read about the weather. And this book is just called Weather. And so you can learn a, fact, a lot of factual information in many of these books. This one says The Rainbow Mystery. And so that one's not a fact book. It's a book that, that is, has a story that is made up. So you can read that story. Here's a couple other books that I like to read. This one is called Stormy Weather, and it's written by Rex Malcolm, and so you can learn about storms. And this is another book about storms, and it's just called Storms, and this is written by Seymour Simon. So there's a lot of books about storms because people are always thinking and talking about the weather. There's a fun old song that people like to sing over and over and over again. And each time you sing this song, you can put your name in it or you can put somebody else's name in it. And this is a book that is a cardboard book that was written that has that song in it. And it's called Rain, Rain, Go Away. And the words to the song are over here at the side. And on, my, on this verse that I put, I put Susie in it. And so it goes like this if you sing it after me. Rain, rain, go away, rain, rain, go away, come again another day, come again another day, little Susie wants to play, little Susie wants to play, rain, rain, go away. So why does Susie want the rain to go away? Because maybe she has to stay inside the house and she wants to go outside and play, so she's wishing the rain would go away. Well, today I'm going to tell you a story about a thing. And there's another book here about a thing. So let me show you this one. Oh, I had it right down here. This is written by Maurice Sondak, and it's called The Wild Things. And so in his book, he has things that, that like to do all sorts of stuff. So you can read about some things in his book. In the story that we're going to learn today, we have a different kind of thing. And this thing is kind of interesting because his head almost looks like a thistle. And you can see the flower on top, just like the thistles that I showed you. Now, one other subject that you can talk about in that goes along with the thick thorny thing is sewing. Um, you might have some thread at your house that your mom or dad might take out to sew your clothing. And they're gonna to have to have a needle. And you can see these needles are very sharp down at the bottom. And they have a little tiny eye that you have to put the thread through. And then you have to poke the fabric and get it to go through. Sometimes it's hard to get it to go through that fabric. So when people are sewing, they sometimes put a thimble on their thumb. And this is a thimble. Can you say thimble? Now you can see this thimble is too small for me. It won't go over my thumb. So I would need a large thimble. And this is probably about a medium sized thimble. So that's something else to talk about in our story. So let me tell you my story about the thick thorny thing now. Once upon a time, there was a thing who lived in a thicket of thorny thistles. Now a thicket is where you have all of these plants that are kind of interwoven like this. So you can take your hands and put them like that and you can make a thicket. Well in his thicket his mom would tell him you have to eat thistles so you can grow big and strong and healthy. But when at first when he was little he really didn't like those thick th those thistles especially when they began to get dry. Because like I talked about earlier, when the thistles get dry, they can kind of scratch your throat and they're not very much fun to eat. But his mom said, no, nope, you've got to eat your thistles. And so she became very careful at going out and getting the tenderest green thistles 
And the thick thorny thing then decided, well, gee, maybe they taste pretty good. I like those. And so as he was eating his, thist his thistles, he got thicker and thicker and thicker and thicker until one day the rain stopped. And when the rain stopped, the thistles stopped being green. And instead, they became kind of brown and they became crusty and they and the thorns got um, pricklier. And now the thick thorny thing wasn't happy at all when he had to eat them. Well, after a long time of having no rain, he got so upset at those clouds for not raining that he took that thimble that his mother had used to sew his clothes and he threw it as hard as he could at a great big cloud. And here he is throwing his thimble at the cloud. Well, when that thimble hit the cloud, there was a great big thud of thunder. And when the thunder hit, the rain started coming down. And as the rain came down, he took the thimble and he turned it upside down and he caught rain in the thimble and he drank the rain so his throat wasn't scratchy anymore. He had all the water he needed to drink and the thistles drank up the water and they grew green again. And he celebrated by putting his arms up and doing a dance. So now whenever the rain stops and the thistles begin to get dry and thorny, what does the thick thorny thing do? He takes that th thimble, he throws it at a cloud, and what happens when it hits the cloud? There's a thud of thunder, the rain comes down, he catches the rain in his thimble, drinks the thimble, the thistles grow green and tender, and the thick thorny thing can grow happily ever after. So now whenever you see our picture of the thick thorny thing, I want you to think about how thirsty he got when there wasn't any thunder and there wasn't any rain. And I want you to take hold of your dry, thirsty throat, stick your tongue out like a puppy dog does when he's feeling thirsty, and make this sound go while your tongue is sticking out. Can you do that again? Now, the thick thorny thing actually has two ways to make his sound, not just one. He can whisper it the way I just did by blowing air and go, or he can use his voice and kind of make it vibrate and go, try that. And the other one was, now let's see if we can find out whether his sound is a consonant or a vowel. So to test that, let's put it into Frere Jaca. So see if you can sing this after me. Are you thirsty? Are you thirsty? Thick thorny thing, thick thorny thing. The things bells are saying, the things bells are saying. Thing thong, thing, thing thong, thing. So what is his sound? Consonant, how do you know that? Because we had to put ing and ong with it. Well, let's try the little puppy song with the thick thorny thing, ready? Little puppy, he says, woof, woof, woof. The things, puppy, he says, thuff, thuff, thuff. Can you do that? The things, puppy, he says, thuff, thuff, thuff. Now, if we have our kitten going meow, what do you think the kitten's, the thick thorny things kitten is going to say? Little kitten, she says, meow, meow, meow. The things, kitten, she says, theow, theow. Theow. So we can play with that with all of our different sounds. Now, let's practice his song together. So warm your muscles up so you can do the song with me. First, we need to make a thicket. So put your hands together like this and kind of intertwine them and sing this back to me. In the thicket lives the thing. And here's his thorns. In the thicket lives the thing thing. Show me how healthy he wants to be. To stay healthy, he needs rain. To stay healthy, he needs rain. On his body, on his body, 
he has thorns. The thick thorny thing is thirsty. The thick thorny thing is thirsty. Now we need to make his letters. Now the thick thorny thing can't spell his sound with just one letter. He needs how many? Two letters. So he uses a T and an H. How can you make that T? I you can make a T by just putting one hand up and putting another on top, but you can make it any way you want. How can I make an H? An H has this line like this, and then it has a little hump. So there's my H. So let's try that. Ready? T, H, think of thirst. T, H, think of thirst. T, H, think thunder. T, H, think thunder. Thunder brings the rain. Thunder brings the rain. The thick thorny thing is thirsty. The thick thorny thing is thirsty. Let's try that one more time and then we'll do it with our recording. Ready? Make your thicket. In the thicket lives the thing. In the thicket lives the thing. To stay healthy, he needs rain. To stay healthy, he needs rain. On his body, he has thorns. On his body, he has thorns. The thick thorny thing is thirsty. The thick thorny thing is thirsty. Your letters T H think of thirst. T H think of thirst. T H think thunder. T H think thunder. Thunder brings the rain. Thunder brings the rain. The thick thorny thing is thirsty. The thick thorny thing is thirsty. Now let's try that with our recording. Ready? <laughs> about on the back of your page today. Um, first, we talked about the thistles. So you might tell me about things that grow in your yard and if some of them are weeds and what you have to do about that, or some of them are not weeds and you want them to grow and what you have to do with them. Do you need to water them and, and do you need to pull the weeds away from them? You can also talk about the weather. What's your favorite kind of weather? Do you like it when the sun's out? Do you like it when it's snowing or when it's raining? And what do you like to do in your favorite kind of weather? Um, you might talk about sewing. Maybe your mom has a needle or your dad and, and a thimble and some thread and what kinds of things they might like to sew for you. You might also talk about what you do when you're thirsty and what's your favorite thing to drink to quench your thirst when, when you're feeling thirsty. So do your drawing on the back of your page and then try to write something about it. And even if your writing doesn't look like it does in a book, that's perfectly all right. Your teacher or your parent can come and show you what it looks like on a book after you've written it your way. So thank you for joining me for the lesson today. I hope you enjoyed learning about the thick thorny thing. And in our next lesson, we're going to start to draw some pictures and do some rhyming just like we did with our other characters. So I hope to see you then.